Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. Calcium is extremely important in our body. For the excitable tissues such as our heart and our skeletal muscles, the amount of calcium determines how well that muscle contracts. If the amount of calcium in our blood drops, then it can change the contractile ability of our heart and our skeletal muscles. It can also affect the way our nerves work as well. So it's very important that we maintain a very tightly regulated amount of calcium in our bloodstream. In order to control this, we have something called calcium homeostasis, and a number of hormones are involved in this process. So let's take a quick look at it. First thing is this. There is a gland, or a number of glands, called the parathyroid gland. You have your thyroid, which is a butterfly-shaped gland that hugs your trachea. So here's the head and the neck, and you can see the trachea here with the thyroid hugging it. If you turn that around and have a look behind the thyroid, you'll see there's a couple of glands embedded in the thyroid. They're called the parathyroid glands. Remember, para means near or close to. Now, these parathyroid glands release something called parathyroid hormone. We'll just call it PTH from now on. Now, what happens is, if your blood calcium levels go too low, so you can see low blood calcium, if they go too low, this is gonna be a stimulus to trigger your parathyroid glands, which are the receptors in this scenario, to release their parathyroid hormone, PTH. Now, I want you to think about this. At the same time, what's happening is that UV light coming from the sun is gonna interact with our skin, and in our skin, we've got a cholesterol derivative, which is called 7-dehydrocholesterol, okay? Now, this 7-dehydrocholesterol is turned into cholecalciferol, also known as D3, from that UV light. Cholecalciferol can also not just get be taken from the UV light changing the cholesterol in our skin, we can also get it from fish, for example. So we've got this D3 cholecalciferol, which is now in our bloodstream and goes to our liver. Now we can also get another type of vitamin D from other foods such as eggs, and that's called ergocalciferol. So we get cholecalciferol from the sun and from fish, and we get ergocalciferol from eggs, and so now we've got D3 and D2 both go into the liver. Now the liver turns them both into calcidiol. Calcidiol, again via our bloodstream, goes to the kidneys, and the kidneys turn it into calcitriol. This is the functional vitamin D. Calcitriol, together with parathyroid hormone, have a synergistic relationship. So together, they do something very special. Three important things. Together they, one, increase the activity of osteoclasts. Osteo means bone, clasts in this scenario is talking about crushing. So, parathyroid hormone, calcitriol, trigger osteoclasts to break bone down. If they break bone down, they release calcium into the blood. Perfect. The trigger, or stimulus, was a drop of calcium in the blood. Now we've just released calcium to bring that blood calcium back up. Second thing they do is they decrease the amount of calcium that we're peeing out. So they go to the kidneys and say, don't pee out that calcium, keep it in the blood. Again, raising up calcium levels in our blood plasma. The last thing they do is they go to our intestines and <clears throat> tell our intestines to increase their absorption of calcium into the blood. So the stimulus was a decrease in blood calcium and the effect was an increase in blood calcium that negates the stimulus, stopping the release of parathyroid hormone, and then this whole homeostatic chain is inhibited. This is called negative feedback, and this is calcium homeostasis.